Hello, grade eight. So this week we are starting with a new chapter, chapter five, called sound waves. Okay, so sound waves are mechanical waves. Okay, but they have other characteristics. So we're gonna get to know that. So these are the objectives that we're going to cover during this week's lecture. Okay, so you guys will be able to identify the nature of sound waves. You'll be able to, uh, you will know the propagation of sound requires a material medium. Uh, you'll be able to distinguish a sound transmitter from a sound receiver, and you'll be able to distinguish uh, to distinguish an infrasound from an audio sound and an ultra sound. Okay, let's start with the transmitters and receivers. So what are sound transmitters? What do you guys think? They are the equipments, they are the objects, the bodies that transmit. So it em they emit sound, okay? So they give out sound. Right, so all objects or bodies which emit sound are called sound transmitters, such as, you know, a speaker, uh, a whistle. There is the tuning fork, if you guys are familiar with it. It's like a metal fork where you strike it, you hit it, okay, with a rubber uh with a rubber hammer and it will emit sound. It will give out sound. Uh, there is also our vocal cords, okay? This is how we speak. I am emitting sound right now. And of course, we have all, all musical instruments. In this case, the guitar, but you have all musical instruments, they emit sound. So these are called sound transmitters. Now, how about sound receivers? What are sound receivers? They are the objects or the bodies which receive sound. Okay, like I'm talking right now and you guys are hearing me. Okay, so you are receiving the sound through your ears. So ears are sound receivers. Okay, we have another sound receiver, which is the microphone. Okay, we speak into the microphone, so it receives our sound. Okay, and we also have other sound receivers like the sensors, okay, that work on the sound. Uh, and yeah, so we don't have much sound receivers, not as, uh, you know, sound transmitters, but these are enough. All right, so now we know we have sound transmitters and sound receivers. But how am I able to hear the sound? How it is actually being transmitted from the transmitter to the receiver? Uh, what is happening? If you take a look at this picture, this is a guitar and these are the strings of a guitar. You guys have played a guitar before or have listened to someone play the guitar, okay? And it uh, usually sounds wonderful. So how, how are you able to hear that? Or how, uh, how am I able to hear that? You can see that the strings of the guitar, they are moving. They are actually vibrating, okay? And this vibration allows me to hear the guitar. This other picture, if you ever played music on, you know, on a speaker and where the membrane of the speaker is shown. Now in this picture, they put paint on the membrane of the speaker so that they, you know, can have this wonderful effect. But you guys can see that the membrane is vibrating. It's moving up and down. It is vibrating. And so is the paint actually. So uh, this vibration that you see is the reason why you are able to hear the music from this speaker. So sound, it is a mechanical wave, we've already said it, but it is created by a vibrating object. Okay, so any vibrating object can create a sound wave. 
Now let's click on the simulation and move to the next slide. Now to understand this more, let's study the vibration of the of the air particles. So you can see that the tuning fork is vibrating and this experiment uh, can be done on all sound emitters, okay, transmitters and not only the tuning fork. All right, so you can see that the air particles are moving, but let's take a look at the air particles. Are they moving like from here to here until they reach our ear and this is where we hear the sound? No, the air particles are simply vibrating in their place. They are giving out the energy to the next particle, giving the energy to the next particle and this is how it works. Okay, at some point, you can see we have compressions, compressions where the air particles are really close to each other. And other uh, instance, we have rarefaction. Rarefaction is when the air particles are far away from each other. Simply, the compressions are where the energy is getting, you know, uh, transmitted from the sound transmitter to the sound receiver. Okay, so from now on, if I am speaking and you guys are able to hear me, this means that the sound wave is moving through the air, okay, in the form of, you know, energy. So each particle is giving the energy to the next particle, to the next particle until it reaches your ear. So another thing, you guys can look at the sound waves, okay, at the sound wave right here, and you can see that the particles are moving this way and the wave is propagating in that way. So this is a longitudinal wave. Okay, so sound waves are longitudinal waves since the particles vibrate parallel to the direction of propagation of the wave. So now we know why sound waves are longitudinal waves. So we're going to do this experiment. We usually do this in a lab. Uh, it's called the bell jar experiment uh, where we put a bell in a box. In this case, we, put, we did put a speaker in a box okay which is a sound transmitter it emits sound you can see the sound waves traveling through the air and there is this girl which uh where she is standing you know outside of the box now i'm going to enable the audio so you guys will be hearing the sound of the speaker it's going to be a bit annoying and you might not be able to hear me well so I'm, I will be explaining what I will be doing next. Okay, all right. So the experiment simply says I need to remove all the air from the box. So I will remove the air from the box and we will see if you guys are still able to hear, you know, the sound that is coming from the speaker. So I will enable the audio. And now I will remove the air from the box. All right, so the air is removed gradually. You can see that. And you might notice that the sound is getting lower and lower to the point where you are unable to hear it. What is happening? The speaker is still playing. Okay, I can see it. It's still vibrating. It must emit a sound. So why am I not able to hear the sound? Because there are no more air particles in here. How can the sound wave, you know, get transmitted from the speaker to my ear if there are no air particles to carry on the sound wave? All right, so this is complete vacuum. So we can conclude that sound waves do not propagate in vacuum and they actually need a material medium to propagate in. So I need certain particles to carry this sound wave. All right. So we can conclude from the previous experiment that sound does not propagate in vacuum because we saw when we took all the air out of the box, uh, you guys weren't able to hear any sound, right? Because sound waves uh, couldn't propagate through vacuum. Now, sound needs a material medium to propagate through it, of course, but the medium 
It can be solid, it can be liquid, or it can be gas. It can be any of these mediums. Now, how about the speed of the sound wave? Is it, uh, does it differ if the medium is solid or maybe if it's liquid or maybe if it's gas? Let's see, click on this simulation. So we can conclude that sound waves travel the slowest through gases, faster through liquids, and the fastest through solids. Okay, so the speed of sound waves in gas is smaller than that in a liquid, smaller than that in a solid. Why is that? Again, in a gas, you can see the air particles are far away from each other. So for one particle to give the energy to the next particle, it has to move all this distance in order for it to give the energy to the next particle. And then of course, come back to its initial position. Whereas in a liquid, the particles are much closer. Okay, so it will take less time to reach the next particle. And in a solid, they are right next to each other. So they are really close to each other and it will take no time at all because uh, the particle is right next to it. All right, so yeah. And the last thing we're going to talk about in this lecture this week is the audible sound. Like, are we able to hear all sounds? Are there some sounds that we cannot hear? Let's check it out. And you can actually check how well is your hearing using this simulation. All right, so this is the simulation. You guys can see I can change the frequency here. It's 20 hertz. And uh, yeah, so I will be changing the frequency, increasing the frequency actually. I want you to know that uh, the audible sound starts from 20 hertz. So I'm guessing some of you are able to hear a sound just right now. Let's try to increase it and you guys will tell me if you can hear any sound. So we are at 476 hertz. I will keep on increasing it. So you guys are able, still able to hear? Now this is very annoying. This is 7430 hertz. Are you guys still able to hear? How about now? Are you able to hear anything? Okay, so we went through all the frequencies starting from 20 hertz till 20,000 hertz. Why is that? Let's talk about it more in the PowerPoint. 
Now, as you guys saw from the previous experiment, that some of you maybe were able to hear frequencies up to 18,000, maybe some of you up to 20,000, okay? But I am sure that none of you will be able to hear a frequency greater than 20,000. And I'm 100% sure that none of you will be able to hear a sound of a frequency less than 20. Why is that? because the human ear is sensitive to sounds whose frequency lies between 20 hertz and 20,000 hertz. So you cannot hear any sound that is that has a frequency greater than this one or any sound that has a frequency less than this one. The frequency that you are able to hear is called audible frequency. It means that you can hear it. It is between 20 and 20,000 hertz. In fact, as adults age, the ability to hear high frequency sounds decreases. Okay, so you might be able to hear up to 18,000 and maybe a few years later up to 17,000 and so on. So this number will decrease with time. But what about the frequencies that are less than 20? What about the frequencies between zero and 20? I, I, of course, I do have sounds that have frequencies between 0 and 20. I may not be able to hear it, okay, but these sounds exist. So, a sound wave whose frequency is below 20 hertz is called infrasound. Infra means below. You can see below the 20, right? So we call it infrasound. And we have lots of animals that do communicate in this way. We have elephants, we have giraffes, we have alligators. They emit sounds, all right? And they are able to receive sounds in this spectrum, in the infrasound spectrum. We are not able to hear it, but they can hear it and they can communicate. Also, how about the uh, sound that sounds that has a frequency greater than 20,000 hertz? So a sound wave whose frequency is above 20,000 hertz is called ultrasound. Ultra means beyond. Okay, so it's greater than 20,000. This is ultrasound. And also we have a lot of animals who communicate in this spectrum right here in the ultrasound such as dolphins and bats so it's pretty scary that some sounds around us we cannot hear but yet they are there right so we can only hear the sounds of frequency between 20 and 20,000 hertz other than that we cannot hear but we have a lot of animals who communicate, you know, in these uh, spectrums. And that is it. We're done with this week's lecture. I hope you guys found it interesting. We're going to explain all of it in the live session. And you let me know if you have any questions. Take care and bye-bye.